Hello and welcome to the Auto Car Show. It's that time of the year again. Where we burn some serious rubber, see a lot of sideways action, and push the cars to their limits. And of course, all of that with the fastest Indian. Narain, it's great to have you back. I Thank think you. Always exciting, each year changes. Tell us, you know, what do you evaluate when you're going down the track and it's just the car and it's you? What are you thinking of? How do you evaluate these cars? We've always had an exciting lineup of cars. And, uh, you know, I look into the, the chassis dynamics, the ride and handling. That's the focus. It's uh, a test for the real driver's car, which is launched in India every year. So, so it's not necessarily the quickest car. It may be a car that's technically not the fastest 0 to 100, but you still find it better sometimes because? Because of the feel and handling, yes. Uh, I find it uh, you know, much more uh, you know, driver's car. Um, so it's not necessarily, uh, okay, lap time does count end of yeah. the day and uh, the Godzilla, the Nissan uh, GTR has been the fastest on this track uh, and uh, no other cars got close to it yet. Um, and today we have an exciting lineup of cars again. And um, let's see if we can shatter that GTR timing today. I doubt and it, see. but <laughs> <laughs> we can change all. Yeah, of that. but um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's. I really enjoy these days, and uh, I look forward to them. And uh, let's have some fun. The annual Autocar India Track Day always raises the adrenaline levels. Having a straight line drag could very well give us the fastest car. But using the track allows us to test the best driver's car in all senses. With Narain driving them year after year, a level of consistency is maintained. And when you see his lines around the track mapped on the V-Box, lap after lap, no matter the car, you will know the kind of consistency I'm talking about. Each year, we choose cars we think could qualify as fun to drive and this year, we had quite an eclectic bunch. Ford's award-winning 1.0-litre EcoBoost, the heart of the new EcoSport. Another exciting engine in a small package, the 1.2-litre TSI petrol in Volkswagen's Polo GT TSI. Moving many rungs up the performance ladder, we have the exciting rear-wheel drive Mercedes E63 AMG. The Audi R8 V10 Coupe with Quattro four-wheel drive. Porsche's stunning new 911 Carrera in its all-wheel drive 4S Avatar. And to spice it up, we added racing DNA in the mix with the Mahindra Super XUV 500. The SUV that's been dominating Indian rallying this season and a really special open-wheel racer. JA Motorsports Indy two-seater track day car, making its track debut with the fastest Indian behind the wheel. Well, it's time to get going and start the action on the track. And we always start with the babies of the bunch. They may be small engines, but they're really interesting ones. The Polo GT TSI and the Ford EcoSport EcoBoost. The Ford EcoSport has been a runaway success since its launch in July this year. While one could love or hate the aggressive styling, what's under the compact SUV skin is what interested us. The EcoSport shares its underpinning with Ford's Fiesta hatchback, one of the best handling cars in the world. And the award-winning 1.0-litre turbocharged EcoBoost engine doesn't feel small, leaving a lot of potential for Narain to unlock. Brilliant. Um, the whole car is uh, packaged and put together very nicely. Um, it has a high CG center of gravity, so you feel the car rolling around a bit, but uh, even then, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's done very well on the track. EcoSport's poise and lack of body roll allowed Narain to really attack the corners, generating a lap time of 2 minutes 19.3 seconds. While it doesn't sound blisteringly fast, this SUV is as quick around the MMSC as a Maruti Swift. 
Enough said, we think. The engine is fantastic, uh, it drives really well, uh, and then, you know, the brakes, um, they're brilliant as well. Um, so, you know, overall they've done a super, super job on this car. Um, and maybe inside, you know, inside the car, the seats don't have too much support. You get thrown in the car a little bit, you're moving a lot. Uh, but apart from that, uh, they've done a very, very good job. Fantastic, yeah. While it wears a familiar set of clothes, the Volkswagen Polo GT TSI has an all-new heart. The 1.2-litre TSI petrol engine puts out 103 bhp and is mated to the Volkswagen Group's DSG twin-clutch automatic gearbox. Game on then! It has an upgraded engine for sure, you can feel the extra horsepower and it's more drivable in that sense. Uh, but uh, on the track it's a bit too soft, the front is too wobbly, it just digs in. Um, they could have made it a little bit more sharper since it's called, it has a GT tag, there must be something more to it. And then the calibration of the TCS is quite uh, poor because uh, you know it uh, has a mind of its own, and uh, uh, also the, the gearbox is quick on the up upshift. But then, uh, well, it's it's nice for the roads, I guess. But um, uh, but on the track, it's a bit way uh, too soft. The GT TSI's turbocharged engine makes much more torque and that combined with the extra gears in the DSG box give it more speed on the straights. But a sportier suspension setup was what Narain missed, which would have given it better cornering ability. Still, the improved engine and drivetrain package pushed the Polo GT to a lap time of 2 minutes and 16.5 seconds. A full 4 seconds quicker than the old Polo 1.6 and three seconds quicker than a Swift. Mercedes' new E63 AMG could well be the ultimate motoring wolf in sheep's clothing. But beneath the stylish metal skin lies the beating heart of a true monster. Beneath the guise of a sophisticated four-door saloon is a strong-hearted animal that can thrill without ever letting you fear it. latest addition to AMG India's lineup now comes with a twin turbo V8 much like BMW's M5. But would it surpass the M5 on our test track? The beauty of the E63 AMG is that it combines thrill, excitement and practicality in good measures. And though it has figures that would give sports cars a run for their money, it lets you enjoy it without any of the edginess some of them have letting you push to your very limits without any fear. You know, for a car this size and this heavy, it handles really well. The really sharp front, uh, you know, brilliant, brilliant sounding engine, the gearbox, uh, everything, you know. It's, uh, the, the AMG cars are always special and, um, you know, the, uh, certainly they've done a fantastic job of this car. The E63 comes with a superbly precise electromechanical steering system. It has a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox with a dedicated multi-stage setting for shift response. And it even has dynamic bolstering for the driver's seat, which just adds to your confidence around the corners. The blazing heat in Chennai, however, got the Merc running into safe mode with barely one flat-out lap completed. As a result, its lap time of 1 minute 59.7 seconds is a good 2 seconds slower than the M5. But we all felt that the well-mannered Merc could have easily been at least a second quicker. Not many dislikes really. Uh, as I said, the car was getting too hot, um, um, you know, uh, for the lap. But apart from that, you know, uh, I'd love to uh, have one. 
If you know what you're doing, it's a brilliant car to have fun. A lot of big drift, black lines on the circuit. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, yes. Porsche's stunning new 911 4S impressed us all when we drove it soon after India launch. But no one could anticipate just how good it would be on the track. Porsches are known to be edgy and unforgiving, but the four-wheel drive has given the car a new character. It's made it easier to handle without taking away any of the fun. With its engine in the wrong place, the rear engine 911 should not have been so quick. But the new four-wheel drive 4S proved beyond a doubt that Porsches know how to make cars perfectly suited for both road and track. This is a sports car that promises to raise your adrenaline levels beyond return. Spend a day driving it and you won't stop smiling for a week. Yes, this car was you know, a blast on the track. I mean, it, it's uh, um, they've done a big, big jump from the handling characteristics of the 997. Improved it much more. The engine is brilliant, the gearbox, the handling. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this car. It's so perfect for the track. And uh, and it just keeps on going and going. It doesn't heat up like the, the Mercedes or the, the, the other cars which we've had before. And it's a really, truly a supercar, I would say. And, uh, and the handling is just brilliant. I mean, it's, uh, it's only slower than the GTR on the track, which is saying something. It's quicker than the Murcielago, the Gallardo, everything put together. With Narain enjoying every second he spent behind the wheel of the 911 4S, he produced a stunning lap time of 1 minute 53.35 seconds. A phenomenally quick lap time that Narain would have happily spent the whole day trying to beat. The timing put it right up on top of the list. It came in fourth on the list of cars we've tested over the years just after the Skyline GTR, which is saying a lot. This is the first 991 I've driven with a four-wheel drive. Um, this is the 4S. Obviously, with a two-wheel drive, I think the car will be a little bit lighter. So, um, you know, it, it could uh, maybe be faster. You know, I don't know, but, uh, but this car was so brilliant. We had a lot of fun in this car. So it gets sideways and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, enough fun, I think. It doesn't handle like a Porsche, you know, because of the rear engine, the Porsches us usually are unforgiving. But this car is quite predictable and the level of grip is very, very high before you get the back end out. So, um, I mean, it's just mind-boggling mind how they've done this car, you know. The first generation Audi R8 V10 Spyder was one of the quickest cars we had ever driven on the track. So the expectation levels were high for the updated R8 V10 Coupe. None of the other cars felt as quick off the line as the R8 did. The acceleration out of the pits was brutal and top speeds unmatched. And to add to the exhilaration, the symphony from the tailpipes was just music to the ears. And when we saw the stopwatch as it crossed the line, it exemplified all that we felt. It was a half second quicker than the Spider we had tested in 2011. I've always liked the R8 and, uh, you know, the, the V10 obviously is a little bit faster than the, the V8 on the track. The top speed is mega, it, it almost does 200 kilometers an hour on the track and no other car is even close, so uh, that's a very positive thing. The car sounds really fantastic with the V10, I really like the engine noise. The Audi's V10 engine produces 518 bhp and revs to 8000 rpm. A 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox sends the power to all four wheels, producing shove-you-back-in-your-seat acceleration. Now, with all the thrill factor that the car provided, we expected it to be high up on the leaderboard. But with a final lap time of 1 minute 54.03 seconds, it was 7 tenths down on the Porsche 911 4S. Still, it came in fifth fastest of all the cars on our track days. Uh, well, compared to the Porsche, yes, uh, I think it, uh, as I said, it has a bit more understeer and then that understeer towards the end becomes a snappy oversteer. 
um, and you can't carry the speed to the apex so that's why you lose the time uh, from the entry to the mid corner um, but uh, apart from that it's uh, the engine is you know I think we have 500 horsepower and it's so very very fast on the straight line but you feel the weight of this car when you brake and stuff you know it's pretty heavy and you feel the the mass um, in the Porsche you didn't feel that much International Motorsport is going green, so we decided to keep with the times. Every year we have a surprise that heads out onto the track to mix it up with the best driver's cars in the country. And in 2013, our choice was the new Mahindra E2O. The E2O may not be the raciest machine here, but it set a new lap record. That's right, the E2O is now officially the fastest electric car to lap the Chennai circuit with its time of 3 minutes, 8.2 seconds. One make series, anyone? Well, motorsport is going green, so this is the future, I guess. But, uh, you know, uh, we have a long way to go. I mean, uh, this car, I mean, uh, it's, uh, the Reva is brilliant for, you know, for what it is. Um, and it was just a fun thing on the track, but, uh, you know, uh, the Acon works really well and it uh, drives okay. Yeah, nothing, nothing bad to say about it. Time now to move from a Mahindra with green credentials to one with definite sporting pedigree. When Mahindra Adventure decided to enter the Indian National Rally Championship this year in the new SUV class, its weapon of choice was this, the imposing Super XUV 500. With the stock car's loaded interior, pared down to just a roll cage and racing seats, and the addition of a customized suspension, the Super XUV 500 has done well on the rallying circuit. For the occasion, the normal tyres were traded in for tinier racing slicks. The Super XUV 500 surprised us with its pace and poise on the track, despite running what was essentially a rallying setup. The four-cylinder, two-litre turbo diesel engine, though, was the weak link in the package, making a lot of noise but lacking the grunt to propel the SUV down the straights. The package they put together is fantastic, and uh, you know, it's for such a heavy car and uh, not much top speed. Uh, you know, we, we it's, uh, you know kind of surprised me a bit on the track, and um, you know, they, they, uh, to be fair to them. Uh, you know, this is more of an off-roader for a rough terrain. Our rallies are pretty rough, I believe, so uh, it's tuned to that. What did impress in the rain was the Super XUV's hard suspension and surprising lack of body roll. And despite the lack of grunt, the 1.8-ton Mahindra produced a lap time of 2 minutes 14.1 seconds, which is quicker than the much smaller and lighter Ford Fiesta 1.5. Our first flying lap was on two-wheel drive. It was more of like a you know front-wheel drive car, and uh, and the lap times was a little bit uh, faster because with, with the four-wheel drive it uh, understeered a bit more. Um, but uh, you know it's so drivable, and um, you know uh, there's a lot of grip uh, for the power it has. So it's overtired in some way. Now for the real twist in the tail. The most intriguing car on the track this year was undoubtedly the new Indy 2 prototype. Designed and built by JA Motorsports, the same guys who built the F1600 and the F2000 single-seat race cars for MRL. The Indy is India's first dedicated track day car. With loads of carbon fibre everywhere, it weighed next to nothing and retained the Formula car wings and racing pushrod suspension while adding two seats allowing the driver the option of giving someone a ride of a lifetime. The Indy 2 was powered by a Renault Sport 2.0-litre naturally aspirated petrol engine, mated to a racing sequential gearbox. The whole package producing over 200 HP. With its excellent power to weight ratio and the fastest Indian behind the wheel, expectations were high. 
Could the Indy conceivably beat its cousin the F1600 to become the fastest car we've ever driven at the MMSC? Well, if you've been watching this program closely, you will already know the answer to that. But watch on. I mean, this is my first time I drove the car and straight out of the box, it's really fast. And uh, and this is, uh, you know, meant to be, uh, you know, a track day car, which is uh, not as extreme as a single seater. Um, it drives really well and, um, you know, uh, it, it's very easy to handle. It's, it's not very um, uh, twitchy and you can take it to the limit quite easily. So, J Motorsport have done a really brilliant car. And, you know, the likes of um, um, Atom and um, uh, Radicals and everything else, I think uh, this car can easily be faster than them. Once Narain settled down, he delivered on the car's promise. While the onboard footage barely does justice to the truly awe-inspiring sight of a proper racing driver pushing prototype machinery to the limit, the Indy's lap time wasn't really a surprise. 1 minute 43.3 seconds was a full 10 second quicker than the electrifying Porsche 911 and actually also crucially faster than the F1600. For a prototype on its first proper track outing to be quicker than a single-seater race car is testimony to the great engineering job done by JA Motorsport. A lot of safety built into the car. It has a, a proper roll cage and uh, everything else. Uh, only thing is, uh, on an open car, you get all the dust off the road, <laughs> which is not very good. <laughs> and so, after a whole day spent slaying tyres in the Chennai heat, we had a new champion. While the Indy took over at the top of the autocar track test leaderboard, the Porsche 911 4S and the updated Audi R8 V10 Coupe also acquitted themselves well, breaking into the overall top 10 and getting Narain very excited about coming back next year. Which are the cars that have stood out for you? I think for this edition, I would say the Porsche 911 Carrera 4S because uh, it was just so fast on the track. Uh, it handled well, it, it, uh, it's very predictable. You know, it's a huge step up from the uh, earlier Carrera, the 997. So it's been a standout and obviously this car, the JA Motorsport track day car, I think uh, this has been extremely fast on the track, very drivable and a lot of fun for, for drivers who want to, um, you know... Experience the yes, track and, exactly, and have yeah. something that they'd be able to handle, you think? Yes, they'll be able to handle quite easily and it's, um, you can push it to the limit and beyond it and it's very forgiving to drive this car, so... You heard Narain's picks, the EcoSport, the Porsche and of course, this prototype of a track day car, which has really impressed him. We hope you've enjoyed watching track day with us and we'll see you again next year.